All right, hey, Shalom, my kiam. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh Bahashim Yahushai, Bahashim Rikak Badash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And we are the Hebrew Israelites, which consists of the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, Sumo Indians, West Indians, and Haitians. And according to the Holy Scriptures, we're God's chosen people. Shalom to all the beloved brethren out there, pushing this knowledge and sincerity and truth. Shalom to the few sisters and shalom to Israelite foreigners who are scattered abroad. And what you're looking at is a true depiction of who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ, whose real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shai. Okay? And what you're looking at is a true depiction of the one you can really call God, when you can really call uh, Jehovah, whose real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh. And when you call upon the most sign his son, you must say Yahweh Bahashem. Yahweh Shah, Yahweh means he to be, or he is. Bahashem means in the name. And Yahweh Shah means he delivers. Our Lord and Savior is coming back to deliver the elect out of the nation of Israel from the destruction of modern day Babylon, aka America. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai and Brak the Yahweh, Brak the Yahweh Shai, Brak the Yahweh, Brak the Yahweh Shai, and the water Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai for another blessed day. The water Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai for the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. The water Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai for giving me this opportunity with this 100% truth. And the water Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai for all you beloved brethren out there pushing this knowledge and sincerity and truth. All right, coming back at you in a lesson through the Holy Spirit. Before I get to my video, I'm going to start off with um, Isaiah chapter 11. Um, dealing with the uh, the restored remnant. All right? Because the, the elect represents the uh, the remnant as well. But we got the remnant have been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth as well. And um, I'm dealing with the, um, the house of Judah. Well, because doing um, the transatlantic slave trade, because the, the the Spanish Inquisition, they they done they they, they really messed up um a native brothers and sisters, the Spanish speaking tribe and, and the native tribes, and this this is dealing with the tribe of Issachar today. All right, the outcasts of Judah, who have been um scattered throughout Central and South America, all right, in different parts of the world, and um pretty much all these governments that came up. After the Spanish Inquisition, you know, they try to push that whole light skin, light skin culture, which you have Israelites who, you know, are light skin in the Spanish speaking tribes. But you have a lot of tears as well. You understand what I'm saying? But those has been um on the darker complexion side of the Spanish speaking tribe, they 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 you know, they get put to the bottom. You know, they, they're not really esteemed as anything within these countries, Central and South American countries. But we got news for you people, man. Those are the Israelites as well. And our Lord and Savior is a dark-skinned man. And yeah, you're going to have Israelites on the, on the light of you. But, you know, ain't nothing wrong with that. That's how the Mosai set it up. But we're dealing with what? White supremacy. So under white supremacy, the, the, the light-skinned complexion is something that's supposed to be admired. It's looked upon as something to, to be admirable about. But in the kingdom to come... We all gonna get our, our pigmentation back, and and and, the, and um the the brown the, the the dark you is gonna be is gonna be in, all right? Because to look like Esau, which he, he has a um a birth defect, the Mosai cursed him with, it's called leprosy. It's called leprosy, man. The Mosai stripped him of his pigmentation. So giving all praise, how about Shimei was sharp? You're gonna jump right into it. Isaiah chapter eleven, verse eleven, and it shall come to pass in that day. That the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, who are the Israelites, which shall be left from Assyria, from Egypt, from Pathros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, from the Isles of the Sea. So, hey, a lot, a lot of this scattering started from the Assyrian Empire, um, captivity to the Babylonian Empire, captivity. To the Persian and the Medes, to the to the Greek and to the Romans, the ultimate scattering is is doing the uh, the, Sp the the Spanish Inquisition and the transatlantic slave trade. Um, after the Roman Empire, seventy A.D., a lot of, of Judah Benjamin Levi, the House of Judah, fled into the interiors of Africa from Roman persecution in different parts of the world. So we always been you know being scattered, but it was all according to prophecy. 
So this time around, the Mosai is going to restore us, man. Once and for all. That's why we got the internet to push this information out. Okay? And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, which is a signal, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. All right? So you're doing the northern kingdom as well. All right? From the Assyrian Empire, captivity, so on and so forth, the Spanish Inquisition, because during the Spanish Inquisition, a lot of them, you know, Hernando Cortez and all different um, Spanish conquistadors, Brought back the indigenous tribes to Spain and different areas, man. So our people got scattered over there as well. So it, so the Israelites are the majority of the people in the world, man. We, we're like we're liking onto the sand of the sea. And gather together the disperse of Judah. That's the house of Judah. All right? From the four corners of the earth. From the four corners of the earth. What are you dealing with? North, south, east, and west of the globe. Right, so let's get, hit it. Let's get right into it. It's the blackest town in Mexico. Guajiniquilapa is the blackest town in Mexico. Guajiniquilapa is the blackest town in Mexico. Guaji, as many people call it, is located in the state of Guerrero and has an estimated 230,000 Afro Mexicans living there. In honor of Black History Month, here are some other facts about Guaji. So, what is the most commonly spoken language here? Spanish. Duh, it's in Mexico. What did you think I was going to say? Corn, coconuts, mangoes, sesame, watermelon, and so much more are all grown here by local campesinos. As we know, the slave trade brought many enslaved peoples to all parts of the world. But one... See that, man? See, see, they got it, they got it on point. That's a disperse of Judah. Because the slave trade consists of Judah, Benjamin, Levi from the west coast of Africa, the transatlantic slave trade. All right, and she, we've been bringing this information out about Gaspar Yanga, Vicente Guerrero for, for quite some time. So the information is getting out there, man. The place we don't commonly think about is Mexico. The most famous slave rebellion in Mexico took place here in San Lorenzo de los Negros, led by Gaspar Yanga. Gaspar the Yanga, he's from the west coast of Africa. I believe he's from Ghana. You understand what I'm saying? That's the whole machete culture came from that. So, so the the uh, the, the, uh, the so-called Mexicans they fit the prophecies as well, man. Not on not only the um the the, the dark skin side, but on the on the light skin side as well. Cause that guy Canelo Alvarez, that's an Israelite, man. You know, you know, brother, you have any little controversies about him? You know, it's all good. But he's an Israelite, man. You understand what I'm saying? So we're liking onto a speckled bird. So you got the lighter complected Israelites, and you have the darker complected Israelites. But due to the fact white supremacy is in full effect, you don't get to hear about this type of information. You understand what I'm saying? And the darker you is, is shunned upon in these countries. That's the point I'm trying to make. Okay, that's the point I'm trying to make, man. This rebellion led to the first community of free black people in the Americas. Being Afro-Mexican doesn't take anything away from a Mexican identity. If anything, it adds. For example, on Dia de los Muertos, Afro- the day, Worship the Day of the Dead, they're going off with that. But you know, our people, you know, fell into heavy idolatry. That's why we are in the condition that we are today. But the Heavenly Father preserved a small remnant to come back unto him and his son in, in, in the, um, the right format, the right, the right frequency, the right, the Holy Spirit. Okay? Skins celebrate just like the rest of the country, except with their own twist. the fringes on on his pants and all that <laughs> what, what, what does that go goes back to the laws all right the 613 laws the most side has, has made covenant with our forefathers abraham isaac to jacob and he gave those the, that those um laws to our forefather um moses to, to give to the nation of israel the danza de los diablos is a traditional dance that goes back centuries and it's just one way that they are able to honor their African roots. Guajiniquilapa is the black... So giving all praises. So we got a lot of Iskarite brothers in the camp. Shalom some brothers, man. Zebulonite brothers. Naphtali. Gadite brothers. You know what I'm saying? All praise y'all by Shimei Awashah. We're in, we in the northern land. So we had to gather, the, uh, like it says, to assembly the outcasts of Israel. And to gather the disperse of Judah from the four corners of the earth. So that's the house of Judah right there. 
All right. So this is where we are today. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim should not envy Judah, and Judah should not vex Ephraim. So we under the right vibration. So that old world, old way of thinking, they got to get, you know, you got to put off that old man. We, we're coming back as one. Whatever differences we have, you got to talk about it and be, be real, man. Be lying to your brother, man. Shit is gay. You're not, you're not a fucking man of the Lord. You sitting there lying about some bullshit. It's not, it's not real, man. But it's, it's all good. The most side is going to take care of everything. But the point is, the most is gathering the disperse of Judah from the four corners of the earth and assembly the outcasts of Israel. So I'm going to get some precepts on this. And Lord willing, um, this is an edifying lesson, you know, to, to the very elect. Oh, this is a beautiful precept right here, Deuteronomy 32 and 26. I said, I will scatter them into corners. I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. And that's what happened, man, especially with the house of Judah. You understand what I'm saying? We got scattered into corners, ghettos. Down there in Mexico is, is pretty poor, you know. So the Most High is bringing this information back up through the Holy Spirit. That you know everything that happened in the earth to his people is a corner on um, biblical prophecy. All right, let's get a Psalm 60. I was looking up these uh, precepts last night. Some beautiful precepts here. Psalm 68 and 21. But God shall wound the head of his enemies. The hairy scalp of such and one as going on still in his trespasses. That's, that's Those are the Edomites. All right? They're still in the trespasses. Breaking the, the laws and commandments of the Most High. You understand? But not only um, you got the dispersal of Judah and Mexico. You got them in Colombia. You got them in Brazil. You got them in freaking Ecuador. You got them all over the Spanish-speaking countries, man. Uh, 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 Panama, um, Costa Rica. We all over, man. You understand what I'm saying? So given all, like, like the beloved brother, uh, brother Taz, man, he's, I think he said his mother is a Benjamite. I was like, holy shit. I wonder why we <laughs> get along and shit, you know? So it, it's all connecting, man. It's all connecting. All right? So, so, uh, my goodness. But God shall wound the head of his enemies and the hairy scalp of such and one that's going on still in his trespasses. So enemy is going to be taken out of power. The Lord said, I will bring again from Bashan. I will bring my people again from the depths of the seas. That thy foot may be dipped in the blood of thy enemies and the tongue of thy dogs in the same so that's why we, we being gathered, man. The Lord is getting ready to set us back up in a position of, of authority under his only begotten son. We're gonna we're gonna trample on our enemies, man. Okay? No more of this bullshit, and that's coming real soon, brothers and sisters. So let's get some more precepts real quick. All right. Yeah, we'll close out with Isaiah 4. I'm sorry, Psalms 47. Psalms 147, it says, The praise for Jerusalem, the restor restoration and prosperity. That's coming in the near future. Okay, it says, Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto God, for it pleases, for it, it is pleasant, and praise is calmly. The Lord do build up Jerusalem. He, got, he gathered together the outcasts of Israel. He healing the broken in heart and binding up their wounds. Starting with this word, this, you know, the information going out. All right. Bind up our wounds and most size, you know, bring, giving us back our, our identity, our culture, our nationality, so to speak. Through his word, he tell it the number of the stars. He called them all by their names. Great is our Lord and, and of great power. His understanding is infinite. Infinite means, bro, you can't put a number on the most high's understanding. The Lord lifts up the meek. He casts the wicked down to the ground. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praise upon the harp unto our God. Who covered the heaven with clouds. Who prepared rain for the earth. Who make grass to grow upon the mountains. He giveth the beasts his food. 
and the young ravens which cry. He delighted not in the strength of the horse. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of man. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him and those that hope in his mercy. And that's the elect. So Lord willing is an edifying lesson unto the very elect and shalom.